This is a completely edible model of an animal cell. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to take a potentially boring cell biology lesson and turn it into something fun and more importantly, incredibly delicious. This experiment or demonstration is really great for homeschoolers because it can be tailored to any age range. I use this as an introductory lesson to cell biology for my younger son, while also simultaneously going much more in depth with my older daughter on additional subjects. Last thing before we get started is this video of course is accompanied by a worksheet that I'll put on my website that you can download for free as always. I hope you can find a way to get some use for in your home education environment. And in a minute, I'm gonna tell you about the very special sponsor for this video that I guarantee you're going to like. But first, for this demonstration, what you're going to need is everything you would typically need to make Rice Krispie treats and a random assortment of candies of various shapes and sizes. Because Rice Krispies harden so quickly, there are some steps you need to take, especially if you're doing this with one student before you actually get started. And that step is to make sure you pre-prep your bowls that you're gonna be using for the demonstration. Typically, you use pans to spread out your forming Rice Krispie treats. But for this, to make the spears of our animal cell, we use some regular old-fashioned kitchen bowls. For prep, and this might actually not be necessary, but what I ended up doing was using saran wrap in the bowls and then we coated that with non-stick spray as I figured it would be easier to remove the Rice Krispie balls once we were done. Once you have your bowls prepped it's then you can start making your Rice Krispie treats in the standard fashion. Keep in mind you're going to need two bowls for each animal cell so if you've got two kids that's four bowls, three kids that's six bowls, you can do the math. Making the Rice Krispie treats is pretty standard and we used a general recipe we found online. I'm pretty sure it was 40 marshmallows per six cups of Rice Krispies and then six tablespoons of butter, but double check that recipe online because I basically just put my kids in charge of that part and they did pretty good. Then take your mixture and pour it in your awaiting Rice Krispie cereal. You're gonna to have to do this part quickly so it doesn't harden and that's why you want your bowls pre-prepped and ready to go. Be sure to pack them down pretty firm and once that step is done, place one bowl on top of the other and it's time to wait. For the best results, I recommend placing these bowls into the refrigerator. Not only will it expedite the hardening process, if you end up just waiting with them on the counter, there's a very good chance you won't wait long enough and then the animal cell won't hold its shape as it's still pretty warm. I know that because we made that mistake with my daughter's cell. The good news is she was able to reform it, place it back into the bowl, and that's when we had the idea to put it all in the refrigerator. Once your Rice Krispie spheres are nice and hard, then you can remove them from your bowls. And the next step, it's time to get your fondant ready. I had never used fondant before and I actually thought inside the packaging were going to be thin squares that we were able to use. I was really surprised when you open it up, it's just a big brick of icing. Thankfully, my daughter had watched enough episodes of Cake Boss to know that you can just knead it down and then use it a roller to make it as thin as you like. Hey Cake Boss, do you mind if I use your likeness in my video? Hey pal, how'd you get this number? To the one fan I might have in New Jersey, I will never imitate your accent again. So now it's time to actually cut out a chunk of your ass. Here's the step where you wrap the fondant around your new sphere. I actually forgot to mention it as I was making the video, but since my daughter walked in front of the camera, I actually walked in front of both cameras, I don't have very good footage to show of it anyway. But take my word for it, put the fondant around your sphere at this time. Back to the original programming. So now it's time to actually cut out a chunk of your animal cell so you can actually make the insides as detailed as you want them to be. So as my son and I make the cuts, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video. It's me and my second YouTube channel. I do a lot of reviews on products that are educational and I put them on this YouTube channel, but I've also started doing a lot of reviews around products that I use around the house that aren't educational and I'm putting them on my second channel. If you want to know if the Garmin mini dash cam is worth it, if the hex clad cookware is as good as it says it is, should you buy this Lego toy for your kids or a different one. Subscribe to the channel and you'll find out. At the very least, it's a good channel to view every now and then for it'll be excellent gift ideas for your friends and family. You know, you can always unsubscribe later once I have 100 subscribers. Okay, once you have your slice from your animal cell, it's time to make it as specific as you want it to be. Here, depending on the level of student, you can get as detailed and creative as you want. If you have a younger student like my son, you can just talk about the fondant representing the cell membrane. You can talk about the Rice Krispies representing the cytoplasm and maybe throw in a nucleus to give them an idea of what the building blocks of the human body and animals are made of. For the older kids, you can have them represent different organelles with different candies. My daughter used various candies to represent mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, vacuoles, and my personal favorite was when she used a gummy worm to represent a flagella on the back of her animal cell. I thought that was a pretty neat touch. This fun product worked exactly like I had envisioned in my mind. It was fun, delicious, and my kids learned the exact material that I wanted them to. Additionally, a few years ago, I did a review on a microscope that was relatively cheap and actually 
actually attaches to your cell phone camera, it is still powerful enough to actually let you visualize a plant cell in a slice of an onion. It's a neat way to make the whole thing full circle going from something that they created and is edible to visualizing the thing that it actually represents. I personally guarantee you and your kids will have a lot of fun doing this demonstration in your kitchen. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Subscribe to my second channel to get it going. The link is in the description. Have a great day everybody and I'll see you next time.